Hello everybody. With the current national crisis, the NHS hasn't ever been as important as it is right now. That's why I thought it was important for us to look at the NHS and the foundations of it. Looking at its creation, looking at when it was created, why it was created and how it was created. Now this actually does form part of the health and the people GCSE topic. So those people who are watching this in year nine, this will be really vital for you when you start your GCSE next year. Those year 10s and year 11s that are listening, you will know this because you would have finished your health and the people topic. Now to understand why and how the NHS was set up, we need to look at what happened beforehand, looking carefully at the steps that led to its establishment. During the 1800s, there was something called the Liberal Reforms. Now this was the first time the government had really taken action to improve public health in England. Before, there was a belief called laissez-faire, which means leave alone. The first step to getting people help was in 1911 with something called the National Insurance Act. Now this meant that people in work could pay into something called a sickness fund, this meant that they would be able to get sick pay and be able to afford medical help if they were ill. The problem was that that didn't actually cover anyone who wasn't in work, so children, unemployed and housewives. So there was a lot more work to be done to support public health in England. Now those GCSE historians that are listening, you will know that war has a huge impact on medical development and progress over time. And that is true for this as well. The Boer War in 1899 to 1902 in South Africa led to the government in Britain to realise that something needed to be done. 40% of the volunteers of the British Army in that war were of such poor health that the living conditions in industrial cities was investigated by the government. The First World War, 1914 to 1918, was very similar. The government was very concerned about the poor health of the recruits. Not only that, but when they were returning from fighting for their country, they wanted a home fit for heroes. And that's not what they were getting. The Second World War, 1939 to 1945, is where we really see the government getting involved in public health. Rationing was introduced, which meant that the government had to think about people's diet. They also encouraged healthy eating through governmental ad advertising posters. Evacuation was also introduced throughout the war. 1.5 million children went from cities to the countryside for their own safety. This clearly showed a divide between rich and poor and the government started to really think about battling poverty in their country. Returning soldiers who had fought for the country came back and they said, we fought for you, now you need to look after us. As a result, a man called William Beveridge, a leading civil servant, set up a plan in 1942 to transform the health service. After the war, this plan led to the creation of the National Health Service, the NHS, in 1948. This was that healthcare for everyone will be free. This meant doctors, dentists, midwives, nurses, they were to be paid by the government, not by patients, allowing everyone to access to free healthcare. William Beveridge put out that they would look after us from cradle, from when we were born, to grave. The NHS was set up and established by a Labour Party under Clement Attlee. A man called Bevan was appointed Minister of Health responsible for establishing the National Health Service. It had at its heart three core principles. One, that it met the needs of everyone. Two, that it would be free at the point of delivery. And three, that it would be based on clinical need, not the ability to pay. In 1951, the Conservatives come to power and keep the NHS and the welfare state, knowing that it was an iconic establishment that was set up for the fair treatment of all. Now, the NHS, since its establishment, has been debated over funding. 
But despite this, it's still regarded as one of the best healthcare systems in the world. And I think we can all agree just how proud we are of the NHS and how invaluable they are now more than ever. And I hope that all of you are going out on those Thursdays at eight o'clock and clapping for our NHS workers and all other key workers. Now I hope you're all staying home and I hope you're all staying safe. As always, if you need anything, please let me know. Thank you, bye.